Hey everyone. So I want to show you something that is super cool. Um, and this is um, an app called OpenBrush. If you've been following VR at all for the last five or six years, you probably have seen people doing things in Tilt Brush. Tilt Brush is a drawing, 3D uh, drawing environment uh, that was made by Google in 2015 or so. Um, but they stopped supporting it, um, just like most of their VR stuff. Um, but what they did was they open sourced the code. So a group of folks have um, taken it upon themselves to make this thing called Open Brush, which is basically Tilt Brush. Um, and they're updating it for different systems like the Quest and you know things as they come out. Um, anyways, what's cool about it is it's free. So that's awesome. Um, and I'll show you where to grab it. Two, it's super powerful and what you can do. And uh, there's a lot of documentation and uh, learning resources and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and three, there is a Unity SDK for it. And what that does is that allows you to directly do anything in VR, right? That you're going to see me do, I'll just do a really quick thing. And then uh, by using an SDK, by installing something in your project, you can take that model, this it's a GLB file, um, and pull it right into Unity and maintain all of the animations and all of the, the sort of like um, uh, interactivity that you're going to build. So. Uh, that's super cool. So it's it's kind of abstract. I'll I'll show you just a really basic thing, and then um I'll uh, walk through right all of the the kind of steps to getting it into your into your project. So, um uh, I'll skip off all of this stuff. I'm doing it in my left hand and stuff. I'll assume that you, you know we'll talk about this in class, or you can watch a video or something about what my controls are and that stuff. But um, suffice it to say, you know you can choose colors. Um, and we're gonna try and draw something. Let's draw some fire. Like that, we can make this a little bigger. There you go, that looks cooler. You can actually hear, like, as I'm drawing, I'm not sure if it comes through um, the uh, the actual like burning sound. It's kind of super immersive and neat. Um, yeah, cool. So that looks really good. Let's try it just a different color, just so when we import it, it looks there's a little bit of uh, um, something, you know, sort of uh, different in the scene, right? It's not just one thing. Let's put some snowflakes in. Cool. And these are like fully animated, right? They're animating around me. They're actually like a weird, um, they're uh, a shader that behaves like a particle. It's it's kind of cool. Um, but anyways, we got this, right? This is bizarre looking, but kind of cool, right? Um, what we want to do, right? Native to the app, you can uh, take pictures of these things. Like you can save it as a sketch. Um, and if you do that, it's going to ask you to do this kind of thing. I'm like taking a picture of it. And I saved a, a photo of it, which is, is cool, and you can share that with people. But what we really want to do, right, as 3D like VR creators, is be able to move around this, not just in the Open Brush app, but we want to take this into your app, right, that you're making. So if you had you want to generate assets, right, for your scene, you can do it here and just like pull those straight in and drop them in and use your XR interaction toolkit and stuff. And you can move this around and grab it. You can make something in here and throw it or whatever you want to do. Right. Um, so the way that we do that, it's, this, you're going to follow me. It's a little tricky, but um, the purpose of this video is to kind of walk you through it and then also reinforce it for me. Um, so we've got our hand menu over here. You want to get down to this thing down here. So I'm looking at my uh, like a little you know, cog toolbar thing. Um, and you want to click on advanced mode. When you fire up the app for the first time, advanced mode's not going to be toggled. Um, and if you don't click this, you won't see the following options. So you click that, and it, it changes some things up here, like you have some more options and things. Um, but what's really important is under now, when you have advanced mode up, you can click more options, and you have this thing called labs. And labs is the sort of... Uh, you can grab these and, and grip to move them, the menus. Labs is just a bunch of different ways to, to interact with your stuff, right? So you can take camera, you know, shots and everything like that. You can put in custom scripts. What really, we really want is this. We want to be able to export this. So we do that. We hit export. And I'm not sure if you can see the HUD and things like that, but it's an exported like untitled too because I didn't name it. Name it. Um, so hopefully you saw that. What that did was that threw it onto the headset. Um, and I'm going to uh, switch. I'll show you on a 2D screen, right, in SideQuest where that is. Because then we have this model, this thing, right, as a custom model, um, just like uh, any kind of you know, model you would get in from the, the asset store or wherever. 
Um, but what's again, what's cool is it will come in looking like this with this sort of animation and material stuff and, and everything. And that's again, the powerful thing. So I'll jump over to a flat screen here out of VR and I'll uh, show you what that looks like. All right, cool. Hey, so we're jumping now into a flat screen environment, right? Out of VR. Um, and I'm gonna show you two things here. It occurred to me um, that you probably wanna be able to see another step here, which is um, that capture that I was doing in VR when I was you know, painting and just talking through the app. Um, I was actually capturing video where right? I was recording in the app uh, in you know, the Quest. Um, and that's a really easy thing to do. You just, there's like a share button in there, it's red click that and then it says record video, take screenshot, whatever. Um, what's not as straightforward is how you get that video off of your quest. Um, it's really easy to stream it. They give you options to go live to Facebook and all that stuff, right? But we don't probably wanna do that. What you want is to get the video, right? Um, the easiest way to do that is to use SideQuest. Remember SideQuest is just an interface for um, uh, the Android debug bridge is the name, right? It's the thing that's talking to your quest, the Android device. And they just made this graphical interface for it. Um, so we'll use that. I've got it open here. I've got my quest plugged in, as you can see up in the upper corner there. Um, and then we want to go um, up to these things here, right? We have all these different options um, up at the top. We haven't even talked about side loading yet because it hasn't really been relevant. We'll talk about that probably Monday. I've got a note to make sure we go over it in class. Um, but that's just how you can um, drag APKs on. Um, but what we want to do right here is manage files, right, on the headset. So we click that. It's going to bring up this whole weird looking you know, sort of interface here. Um, and these are all the different files on your device. Yours are probably going to look different than mine, right? Because I've got different things installed. Um, the ones that are important here uh, for us, um, the first one is the uh, um, the video, right? Um, you like recording, I mean, you may, may think, ooh, movies and click on it. It's not under movies, right? You can click on here and it's like, you're going to get all these, these JPEGs. These are different things maybe I recorded at some point, I'm not sure. Um, what you want to click on is Oculus because reasons, I'm not totally sure, but it's reason, uh, Oculus, right? And then video shots. And then you get all of this stuff and it's it's not well organized in SideQuest, but it, it's easy to get at least. Um, and what you really just need to do, you're gonna have nothing, right? If you do this for the first time, these are all just different videos I need to delete. Um, I'm just looking for 319.2022. Um, so I'm recording this on Saturday morning. So I want 319. They're not even organized like in uh, like dates, <laughs> like by chronological. So let's see if I see it. You guys are probably going to see it before me and like be yelling at me through the screen. There it is. All right. Open brush. This is what it recorded. What was the app? And then when I recorded it and you can click on save, it's going to pop up this. It's going to save as an MP4. Where do you want to put it? Um, current location is location is there. So I actually have this folder already set up on my desktop. I made an open brush folder as I was practicing this earlier just to see if it even worked. Um, so I'm just going to say save to PC like that. And then we can go and check on my desktop here in my open brush. And there it is. Okay. So we're going to have this uh, just MP4 file. The cropping is a little weird, you'll see. Um, um, anyways, what there's me talking. You'll see the crop like capturing in the in the headset is not great. Um, it gets a, a sort of truncated view. Um, there's no way around it really right now. The the best alternative is maybe to um, do side quests to, to screen share um, here. And again, we'll talk about this probably Monday. These are just settings and side quests we haven't gone over yet. But you can actually like screen share what you're seeing in the in the headset, and then just like screen cap what you're seeing in. Um, Inside quest, that's a little bit better, like field of view, but anywho, that's how you do it, right? So super easy to do in the headset, a little bit cumbersome to get off the headset, but definitely relevant if you want to share, you know, pancake videos of what you're working on. Okay, so that's uh, that's video, same process, right? Um, we got this thing called SD card, that's the hard drive on your quest. Um, and we want to grab that file. Right. Um, when you install OpenBrush on your device, you're going to get a folder in here called OpenBrush. And then when you have it in advanced mode, you're also going to have something called exports. Okay. And mine have a bunch of them here called Untitled. I should really start naming these probably as I'm practicing this, but Untitled underscore two um, is what we need. And then if you do this on a quest, you're going to get a GLB file. If you do it on a tethered version. You can get this for like Steam VR if you have your headset plugged in at home to a 
a PC with a, a card. Um, I think it'll export as like a OBJ file. I can't remember. It's something different for, for Windows. Um, regardless, this is what we want. We want these three files, OK? There are two PNGs. There's the textures. And then this GLB file, this is the actual model, like the thing, right? Um, so that's where it is. We're not going to grab it quite yet, because I want to walk through how to set up the Unity project first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll grab those. So let's do that. Um, I won't even cut the video here. We'll just kind of jump in and start doing this. Um, so I'm just going into Hub, uh, and I'm going to make a new project. Um, you want to uh, make sure when you hit new project, right, that you're on the right version. I installed 2020 on my computer because I was trying to test um, actually OpenBrush. Because as you're going to see, there's a really bad bug um, with it that uh, I helped the Discord people fix, which was really fun. Um, we got to bug fix it, and they were like, oh my gosh, there's a 2019.434 bug. Very cool. Um, so I'm just going to make a project called OpenBrush Test for CTK. Okay, I'm throwing it on my computer. It's just a 3D uh, project. Hit Create Project and let that go. Um, and it'll start popping up here. And then uh, I'm going to show you the website. Actually, while that's going, um, I'll show you this. Open brush. Um, if you want to grab it, like the actual app, you can just type Open Brush into Google. You're going to get to the App Store. Or sorry, the App Lab. It's not. It's not the official store, but um, you can grab it. It's just like the um, couple of the other apps I've had you guys get. You can click here if you're logged in. It'll throw it right on your Quest for you. Um, you can do it through the app on your phone or actually in VR, right? You can go in and search for Open Brush and you'll find it. Um, so that's how you get it. That's the actual app. Um, but what's interesting is they have this other website called openbrush.app.app. And there's all these different things, right? They show you where it's available, right? Live for it, show, um, all that stuff. Um, and what we really want is to uh, view the docs. We want to learn about this app, right? Because we don't just want to go in and play, which you absolutely can. It's fun and you can make stuff. But what we want to do is co-opt the thing. We want to grab things from it, right? And kind of like dig in just a little bit. Um, so this is great. Like if you have any questions about any of this stuff that I'm going through, they're they're really good about it. Like they've got this whole documentation. How do you get it? Well, let's get it on App Lab. You can also get it on SideQuest, right? Um, as it said there, where to go? Uh, uh, there it is. You can grab it on SideQuest too if you just want to grab it through that app. So anyways, um, go through looking through stuff. This is all good. Um, user guide I think is in here. Brushes exporting Open Brush Unity SDK. This is what we want. Right, because as it stands, the app is great. It just you can make stuff and share it within the Open Brush kind of world, right? Um, but we want to we want to use it as a tool for creating other, you know, sort of VR experiences. So this is what this is what'll allow that to happen, right? It allows us to take it into Unity. Um, so what this is, right? The Open Brush Unity SDK allows you to import your Open Brush sketches into Unity. This SDK includes all of the brushes and materials. That's the big thing, right? There's a bunch of shaders that are used in the app. It's made. Uh, they've gone through and made sort of a bridge to um, make those into shaders that Unity will understand and materials that Unity will understand, and then therefore will be universal. So that's that's another important thing to note, right? What we're doing for this for this class for 380. Um, is VR centric, but this is not VR centric. This is just Unity at this point. So if you're making a 3D game, you can do this too. If you make something in Open Brush and then bring it into your platform or your two dimensional game or something, you can do all kinds of things and just use it as a tool. Um, great. And it's going to uh, do this thing where a script that automatically assigns uh, GLB files. And then this is also super cool. Um, it has an audio reactivity functionality so that you can drag another prefab in. And then the uh, it'll create like basically like a uh, a visualizer. So if you're playing music, that sort of things will move and like change shapes and things based on the spectral data that it's hearing. So if you play music in your app, right, you can kind of have all the stuff in the the scene kind of reacting to it, which is pretty cool for for VR. Um, okay, so it's got this 2017.4.22f1. We're above that, but like I said, there's a 2019 bug that I'll I'll have to fix with you guys. Um, and then, uh, yeah, this is it. So it's, it looks really simple, right? And then we're, we're going to run into a wall. But it's just grab this here, the SDK. Um, it, it's a Unity package, right? You're going to open Unity. You're going to create an existing project, right? Or 
create a new one, open an existing one. You can use the ones you already have. I just made a new one to show you. Um, double click download um, or go and import it. It's just like you've downloaded and imported anything and then import the package, right? We're going to have to put step five here where we fix it. All right, so let's go and grab it. This is where you go. This is going on to GitHub, which is just, you know, a repository for file sharing and all that kind of stuff. Um, it gives you a bunch of stuff here. It's talking about like um, some things. And it says here, very, really importantly, if you get the errors, the namespace Newton soft could not be found or the type or namespace J, JSON ignore could not be found when installing, then either install json.net yourself via the package manager or download json.net for openbrush.unity uh, below. So that's what we'll do. You can do this through the package manager. Unity has a thing built into the app where it's like, this is extra JSON stuff, which is, I don't really understand JSON, but if you do, you'll know what they're talking about. If you don't, it doesn't really matter. Um, regardless, we just need to add something to your project. Um, so let's do that. Let's go ahead and grab this Unity package. Like I said, install this and then install this. Okay, so let's click download, grab that and install that one too. So if your Unity package or project is open here, right? Um, you've got that. I'm gonna go and find those on in my downloads. Just grab them here. I've already downloaded them yesterday, but uh, I've got another version of them. And double click. And while Unity is open, if you double click, uh, it'll just automatically import it for you. Um, you wanna get everything. So just hit import and let it go. And it's going to freak out <laughs> on you. You're gonna get like a ton of errors. That's okay, we're gonna fix them. <laughs> Eventually. There we go. Okay, cool. So this is the thing. It said like if you're getting these na these namespace uh, errors, Newton soft, like this is what they were talking about in the GitHub post. Um, then do this, right? Go and get this thing, which is the other file, and import it. And hit import, and you're like, great, problem solved. And if you use Unity 2020.3, uh, yeah, problem is solved. Um, however, in 2018, this script, this GLB1 importer and GLB2 importer is bugged. And this is what the Discord folks were like, huh, that's really interesting. Um, and in, they're smart. They fixed it in about 15 minutes for me. Um, but um, I've got those scripts for you. And I'll throw these on Teams, and you can go and grab them. Uh, it's super easy how to to kind of uh, you know deal with this. Um, and yeah, these you'll have on Teams. You can go download. But uh, these are the updated versions from the Discord folks. Um, all you're going to do is in your project find these two scripts. So GLB one importer, GLB two importer. Um, they are under scripts editor. Um, the other way you can do it is if you click on these the errors in your console, it's going to highlight them and show you what, what script it is. Um, normally, do not do what I'm about to do. But since we know we are going to be deleting something and, and fixing it, um, we can just go ahead and do this. I'm just going to select those two scripts and hit delete. And Unity will give you this prompt. You cannot undo this action, um, which is serious. It's You could completely bork your project if you don't know what you're doing. So we do know what we're doing. We're going to hit delete. Um, it's going to recompile and give us probably lots of problems, um, but that's okay. Uh, well, nothing right now because we haven't tried to do anything, but um, Tiltbrush, uh, this like app doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but so it's like fine, but completely non-functional. Uh, what we want to do then is get the two fixed ones and drag them in. And what's really important here is that they're still in this folder. They have to be in assets, Tiltbrush, scripts, editor, have to. Like, because they're, they're specifically what's called editor scripts. So they have to be in that folder, in that hierarchy. Drag them in, drop. That's it, right? So now those errors didn't come back. It recompiled, and we're good. Um, again, I don't know what they fixed. I haven't gone back, actually, and looked at the scripts and compared them. I will probably before we meet on Monday just to see how it was not working. But it's working now, so which, is, which is great. So. That, if you have this set up now in your project, you're good to go. Um, all you have to do is go and find that GLB file now, because um, we just want to bring in our, our model and look at it. So let's create a folder. Um, let's just call this like uh, open brush, brush stuff. Um, open brush stuff. And 
I'm going to go and find those files that I saved, right? Um, these were on, uh, or sorry, they're on my, my quest still, right? Um, and I'm going to go and save those somewhere. We'll throw them on my desktop. Okay, so you go to save and you select location. I'm going to make a new folder here. This is in that open brush folder I made. I'm going to call this um, CTK model, whatever. I mean, you, you should probably like keep this organized, right? Like name it. It was a mountain or an apple or something, whatever you're making. So select that and you hit save to PC. And I'm going to get the other main text. Um, I don't actually, I should say this. I don't know if you absolutely need these, but it's they're so small that it uh, makes sense. Save and then save. I'm pretty sure you do because I think it's associating these texture files with the material that it's generating, but I don't know. Uh, it's less than a bag, so who cares? Uh, anyways, those are saved, right? On the desktop, open brush, open brush or CTK. Here we go. If you look at them, right, it's the kind of uh, snowflake thing. This is that fire kind of thing. And here's untitled too. I'm going to call this CTK model just to keep it cleaner, right? And I'm going to drag it in. And there we go. And now I'm going to drag it in here. And there it is. There's our thing. If you do this um, without that process of putting in the open brush SDK, it'll import. You can bring a GLB in. It will just be completely gray. It'll be textureless and there'll be no materials. What it, what the actual asset is doing, what the, the, the folks have made is this stuff. Like they're getting this brush special fire shader made for you and they're making this material um, and making it associate correctly. And then also, because um, they're writing the shader, right? And then also having this snow thing, which is like a weird particle shader thing. I'm not totally sure how this works, but um, it's cool. <laughs> um, uh, it gives it, like they have this jitter kind of stuff and intensity. Uh, I'll hit play so you can actually see it. Um, it's not going to, if you look in your editor, um, really work in the editor. Um, and I'm gonna re-move my camera here so you can see this better. Uh, there we go. Um, and also really quickly, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna take away the skybox. I'm gonna hit none. It's gonna make it blue, which is, this is kind of weird. You're like, why is my skybox blue? There is no skybox. Um, it, all it means is your camera is now telling you what the sky is. And what we wanna do is set that to solid color and black. Um, the only reason I did that is so you can see the model better. Um, you don't wanna do this in your uh, project. Don't mess around with that. Um, but this is just so when we hit play, we can see it. Because if you look at this in the editor here, you're not going to see the animation stuff, right? Um, but if you hit play, we will. And this is the actual game view, right? And you sort of see it in the editor. Um, your computer, the editor, if your uh, PC like starts to kind of like stutter a little bit, it'll stutter in the editor, but it should look pretty good in the game view if you ever have that happen. Um, but that's it. Now we have this thing, right? Which is super cool, right? That's really easy. Um, and there's tons of like functionality in Open Brush. Like a, that was just me like ham fisting like two things together. Um, I'll link you guys a bunch of different resources, you know, to look at and teachers that have tons of tutorials, artists. It's crazy what you can do. Um, you can create full 3D terrains and stuff. It's really awesome. Um, one more thing I want to show is that um, reactivity thing, the audio reactivity, I think, I think it's just cool. A lot of you probably will be into this. Um, so I'm just making a music player here, just an empty game object. Um, let's call this music, and I'm going to add an audio source to it. Uh, and this is just going to play non-diegetic audio. So just we're just playing uh, music for the purposes of this. Um, we just need some sort of audio. Um, let's go to the asset store. Actually, I can grab one from my package manager. Uh, let's see. Nah, let's go to the asset store. Just go to the asset store. This will be faster. I'll, I was going to say, I'm going to try and find one, but uh, we're going to search for uh, music. <laughs> let's find music and then set it to free. And let's see what we find. Um, what looks good here? I guess they're all fine at this point, right? Um, I found one yesterday that was kind of cool. It was a, was it? It was a, uh, like an 8 bit one that was kind of, it worked really well, but. Let's see. Let's see what free music is here. It's bumping. I love it. Okay, let's go. So adding it to my assets, open in Unity. Um, did that come back? 
open in Unity. Open in Unity. There we go. Sorry. Open in Unity. Um, it'll add it to your package manager, right? And then you just download, import. It's just bringing in a bunch of MP3s or waves or something like that. Um, and again, you can use anything for this. You could use the audio output. We were talking about videos, right? The audio output of the um, video that you're using to control like the kind of visual stuff all around you, um, which could be super cool. All right, so this is stupid dancer dot wave. I like it. Um, go ahead and grab that. Wave files. We talked about this a while ago, but just to reiterate, this is not ideal. Like you, you actually really don't want to use wave files for music because they're too big. You're loading um, a lot of stuff into the um, into your RAM that you don't need to. Um, you can go ahead and pass that off to the CPU um, by using an MP3. It's a smaller file. It has to decode it because it's an, an encoded file, an, an MP3. But it, it's just way better. Um, you don't want to load up like a ton of WAV files into your your system RAM. It'll overload your system when you don't want to. Um, however, the flip side, right? If you remember back, is if you use short files like little sound effects, use WAV files because they're really short, right? They'll be play, done, gone, right? So for short stuff, waves, long stuff, OGs or MP3s. Anyways, here we go. Let's listen to some music. It's Chunky Monkey. Obviously, we're going with Street Love. Um, OK, so let's put that there. And that's it, right? That's all you have to do, because I'm just playing two-dimensional music here. Um, it's not like in, this, in 3D or anything like that. I'm going to get in really close with the camera here. Um, and all I'm doing, since we don't have a movable camera, I'm just setting my scene view where I want the camera to look, like so right here, right? And then selecting the camera, and then going up to game object and saying, OK, move the camera there, align with that view. It'll make the camera look at it. In VR, like you wouldn't do this, obviously, because you just put the thing in the scene and then move over to it in VR. But for a demo purpose, it's what we'll do. Um, yeah, and let's maximize this. Oops, on play. Uh, let's see how it goes. OK, that sounds good. OK, that sounds good. Now let's add the audio reactivity thing. So that's actually in the Tilt Brush project, and it's the only thing under Prefab, and it's this. Um, they made a visualizer script, uh, and these are things that you can play with to kind of change how the music uh, interacts with your, your visuals. OK, so we hit play. Uh, it's got this like sub child thing here. These are different reactors. Um, again, I fully expect you to go through and play with this stuff if you're really into it um, in a really like childish way. Just like hit play and start like sliding these things around and see what it does, right? And you can sort of figure it out if you're an audio file like CTK person. Some of these things might look familiar to you, like FFTs, right? Fast Fourier, fast Fourier transforms, and if they're things you've heard before. It's it's probably you've taken the classes and, and seen that, um, where you can start to to play, like just slide these things around and see what it does, right? Um, anywho, let's hit play, let's see what that looks like. Keep going. So it's not moving a lot. Let's try it. Um, let's see, high pass, low pass. Uh, I wonder, yeah, I wonder if it's. Um, FFT power. Let's turn that up. Think. This is where you guys are learning with me, right? Let me grab something. You guys are like learning with me. I had a different asset yesterday. I think it's looking for peaks, like the the sort of like um like hot transients, like drums, basically. Um, let's look again. See if I can find the one I had yesterday. Uh, action music, eight bit. This is the one I had yesterday. Let's see if this works. Um, if not, maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. Um, Let's see, open in Unity, open in Unity. Let's see if I can find the, these are like really like in your face 8-bit sounds, um, which is it's good to know, right? By default, the reaction of the snowflakes, right? As a specific thing might not be super no noticeable with uh, you know, longer, you know, kind of sounding music. Um, so let's check it out here. We got that in now uh, under this thing. I think, what did I do? 
That was the one. Yep. Cron Audio 8 bit Retro 3. Let's go. Okay. All righty. Let's see if that works any better. Yeah, so it's it's either um, that's a lot louder too. Probably you're hearing. Um, so it's either volume. We'll have to play with this. It's either volume it's looking for or the the attacks, right? So you want to actually kind of look at. Um, please stop, Cron. Um, uh, you want to kind of look at this actually. You can see I'll, I'll pull this into an editor really fast, but just to demonstrate. No. Um, you see all the peaks here, like the, this is a, a visualizer, um, but it's looking for like these kind of hits, right? When you have these hot kind of events where you get a lot of transients and a lot of sound, um, that's causing the, the snowflakes to move really, really jerkily, which is kind of cool. Um, it's gonna depend on what type of sample you wanna use, obviously. Um, and again, I expect you, if this is something you're interested in to play, different, uh, Using different brushes, obviously, um, will have different effects, but then also kind of playing with the stuff and see if you can find some uh, uh, correlation, right? And there may or may not be documentation for this. It looks like they don't have any tool tipping. Um, so maybe it might be on the, the website. There's some documentation where you can read. Um, yeah, so that's it. Some other, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about in class, like some other resources. Um, there are a ton of great tutorials. Um, one of them, the one I'll, I'll link you that I think is awesome is by this person named Danny Pittman. Um, they have this the whole curriculum, basically. It's probably 20 videos um, and they're great. It's a really good teacher showing you like different tools. Um, and one that I think is really useful for us kind of in this class and this sort of world building uh, stance probably that we're, we're looking at this for um, is the ability to create large scale terrain using open brush. Right, so to create the sort of illusion of, of distance and fogging and all kinds of stuff, um, which I think you'll like, it's, it's super cool. Um, so I'll link that to you uh, in class, like I'll, I'll share it with you all. Um, and uh, yeah, just let me know if you have questions. Again, other tool, I'm gonna try to throw as much stuff at you as possible for the class um, now that you have access to the headsets and you can start doing stuff for your final projects. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have questions and hope you have a good rest of your day.